God bless you. Today we are going to discuss about altars and uh, why altar is very important. In the Bible, there was this king by the name of Balak who went on and uh, ordered Balaam to come and curse the children of Israel. Altars are very important in the realms of the spirit and altar is a place of transaction. Altar is a place of agreement. Altar is a place of sacrifice. In this time and age, there are people who are wise in the spirit and they are willing to raise altars against people, to raise altars against those who are chosen, to fight them and to bring them down. But I'm here to encourage you and I'm here to tell you, whatever they do, it will not succeed and it will not prosper. Because if God says yes, no man can say no. There are people whose family... There are altars that are against them. The altar of marriage, the, the altar of finances, the altar of struggle, the altar of sickness. And these altars are directed to you uh, precisely for you not to succeed and for you to suffer. An altar which is from the darkness will bring down destruction upon you if you are not willing to raise a godly altar and deal with that altar. May God bless you and guide you. So when we read the Bible in the book of um, uh, Numbers uh, chapter 23 verse number 1, Bible says, Balaam said, build seven altars here and prepare seven bulls and uh, uh, seven rams for me. Uh, Balak did what Balaam asked and uh, then Balak and Balaam killed a ram and bull on each of the altars. Then Balaam said to Balak, stay here uh, near this altar. I will go to another place. Uh, then uh, the Lord will come to me and uh, he will tell me what I must say. Then Balaam went away to a higher place. God came to Balaam at that place and Balaam said, I have prepared seven altars. I have killed a bull and a ram as a sacrifice on each altar. Then the Lord gave Balaam a message for Balak and said, Go uh, to Balak and say things that I have given to you. So Balaam went back to Balak. Balak was uh, still standing near the altars. And all the leaders of Moab were standing there with them. Then Balaam spoke, and this is what the message is. Balak, the king of Moab, uh, brought me here from the eastern mountain of Aram. Balak said to me, come, cast Jacob for me. Uh, come, speak against the Israelites. But God did not uh, uh, against them, so I cannot speak against them either. The Lord has not asked for bad things to happen to these people, so I cannot do that either. I see these people from the mountain. I see them from the high places, high hills. They live alone. They are, are not part of another nation. Who can count Jacob's people? They are as many as the grains of dust. No one can count even a fourth of their Israelites. Uh, let me die like a good man. Let my life end as happy as theirs. Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I brought you here to curse my enemies, but you have blessed them. But Balaam answered, I must say uh, the, Lord, uh, the things that the Lord has uh, told me. Then Balak said to him, So come with me to another place. At that place, you can see more. Of these people you can uh, you cannot see all of them you can only see a part of them maybe uh, from that uh, place uh, you can cast them uh, for me so Balak led Balaam to watchmen uh, hills uh, this was on top of Mount Pisgah then Balak built seven altars and killed a bull uh, and ram on each of the altars as a sacrifice then Balaam said to Balak stay here by this altar while I go and meet him uh, meet with God over there so the Lord came to Balaam and told Balaam what to say then he told Balaam to go back to Balak and say these things so Balaam went back Balaam was still standing near the altar the leaders of Moab were there with him. Balak saw Balaam coming and said, What did the Lord say? Then Balaam said, Stand up, Balak, and listen to me. Hear me, Balak, son of Zippor. God is not a man. He will not lie. God is not a human being. His decision will not change. If he says he will do something, then he will do it. If he makes a promise, then he will, uh, he will do what he promised. He told me to bless them. He blessed them. So I cannot change that. God saw no wrong in Jacob's people. He saw no sin in the Israelites. The Lord is their God and he is with them. Uh, the great king is with them. God brought them out of Egypt. God bless you. So as we continue to discuss about these uh, things of altar, 
Which type of an altar is raised against you? So we see here, Balaam raising seven altar. Balaam and Balak, seven altar. And then there was a negative report. And they raised another seven altars. So they raised 14 altars to curse the children of Israel. How many altars are erected? How many altars are raised against you? I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Any altar that is speaking against you, may that altar break by fire in Jesus' name. And whoever is standing beside those altars, God is not a man. That is the answer from Balak, Balaam. He said that God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a man that he should change his promise or change his mind. When he bless, no man can curse. When he, when he uplift, he will not change his mind to, to pull you down. So those who are planning to pull you down, they are doing jobless. They are doing nothing. Whatever is, whoever is planning to destroy you, they are doing nothing. So I am praying for you today. Any altar that is against you, um, it, it cannot stand against the altar in Calvary, which Jesus Christ died on it. I pray for you. May your things go well. And if you need prayers, you can contact me on the numbers that are on the screen. May God be with you, guide you, and guard you. I am praying for you. Amen.